Well, it is six o'clock, so we'll call it to order. Oh. This is going to be the buzz bu budget <laughs> presentation. And this is everything, Eric? Is the whole ball of wax. We're all ready well, to go. It is and it is. Yes, it is the ball of wax from an operating standpoint for the year. What's not in here, uh, which will be presented in May or possibly June, depending on the commission, is going to be Measure A. Okay. Um, but Measure A is kind of its own self-fund, uh, but we'll have a work plan set for that prior to the beginning of the fiscal year to be board approved. Do we have any idea up or down? Um, yes, I actually just got communication from the county yesterday. I anticipate uh, they I don't they anticipate eighty seven thousand to our agency next year for measure A. So uh, it's been going up slowly every year. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, it kind of goes hand in hand with consumer confidence. It's one hundred percent a sales tax uh, measure. The more people spend, the more it comes in. 2017, 2018, 87,000. Yep. And then the only expenditure we've made on Measure A this year is the truck. Beautiful truck. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, you know, many of the notes that I included on the first page were the same from the last time. I just left them in there. They're more some chart of account clarifications. Mm -hmm. um, some of the changes from last time as well as some general notes and apologies. Uh, if I am repeating myself, I just thought some of them were worth mentioning in advance. Um, so bear with me as I go through this. Um, taxes, I have updated all of the general property taxes. They are, uh, what I did was I went through the last three prior years, meaning 15, 16, 14, 15, and 13, 14. Um, looking for trends within actuals. The county only released a projected increase for current secured, the top line of the taxes of 5.5% over 15, 16. So over last year's actuals. Uh, the number that I have plugged in there, 1.444856 is 5.5% over what we received in 15, 16. Um, all of the others, but, you know, our, I don't want to call them educated guesses. Again, they, it was analyzed and really looked at. Some of them would have upswings of 10%, followed by a downswing of 10%, followed by an upswing of 10% year over year. So it was really hard to gauge. So I kind of tried to leave some of those flat. Um, and then certain ones, like the prior year reverse ERAF, uh, even though there is a, a level of actual in there, I don't anticipate more coming in. Um, at this point in time on that one, and I would say uh, it's safe to leave that as a non-budgeted. If something comes in in the middle of the year, it can always be amended and added into the budget. Um, and the same would also go with uh, the Hopter, which is the Homeowners Property Tax Relief Fund. Uh, that has been not a super consistent thing uh, year over year. So again, that wasn't budgeted this year. I'd recommend not budgeting it again, uh, even though it does show a level of actual for this purpose. I would much rather make an amendment showing more revenue than taking revenue away. Uh, for allocation purposes, uh, what I have done, and this is the same methodology I applied to last year's budget at the time of adoption was uh, once we kind of went through and had a more clear understanding of expenditures across the board, I brought the rec department and I brought the fire department uh, through allocating property tax revenue to approximately uh, within a 0.1% anyway of $10,000 net gain over expenditures and I left the rest in the park department. Um, I did that for two reasons, primarily the park department is traditionally where the county auto deposits into our fund. Um, and then if there are journals uh, needed later in the year, budget amendments that are needed later in the year, this is journaling from one department for Carolyn to do as opposed to journaling equal amounts out of three departments. I could foresee uh, journals being uh, 
amendments along the lines of, you know, more towards end of year as we realize uh, actual taxes, if there was an OPEP uh, contribution that wanted to be made above what we'd already be, had budgeted. Uh, and then I would also say anything that is left uh, in terms of a net gain over total expenditures uh, could always be applied towards general fund replenishment as we work towards that goal as well. Uh, that kind of covers it on where I am at with the taxes. Um, in terms of other revenues by department, uh, again, for the rec program, summer rec uh, program revenue for that department, uh, you'll see a large increase that really is more in line with anticipated attendance as well as some expanded programs. I'd say we were incredibly conservative with it last year and they easily beat those uh, conservative estimates. This is more in line with what we actually expect, yet still somewhat conservative, I would say, uh, but much more uh, what we think will actually happen. Uh, of note, on the fire side for revenue, uh, it's very important to understand that CSA 13 uh, contract, as well as the, the line that's called service contract revenue, 4631145, uh, those are not final numbers, those do not get finalized until after the close of the year. Um, the CSA 13 factors in 16, 17 actuals for the 17, 18 total because it is based on a budgeted number. So it always kind of has to carry over into the next year. Uh, it also applies credits for any wildland OES reimbursements. Um, and we're just not going to know what those are until the end of the year. I think this number's close, but I think it could easily fluctuate by 10% in either direction, most likely down, if anything. Um, also, um, the CSA 13 agreement total is what ultimately winds up setting the rate for juvenile hall and county farm. So until CSA 13 is set, that's not there. Um, I do want to up note, uh, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. In terms of, uh, and I'll talk more about these later, but in terms of the capital reserve designation, for this number that is in this budget right now, I did not apply the 80,000 that has been allocated towards the fire department as part of the total expenditure when I factored in the CSA 13. Um, I did that primarily because I figured that CSA 13's share of actual expenditures would be applied at the point of expenditure. The other way to do it is to factor in the reserves, and then when you spend the reserves, you take that down from the future CSA 13 contract. I thought this was a lot cleaner to do it up front and just say, okay, these are reserve funds that we're holding, um, and then when you make an expenditure, even utilizing reserve funds, which will then go into the budget, the CSA 13 would factor at that time. So I did take that out, Ron, uh, when coming into this. Um, but it's just a matter of if you take it out up front or you take it out on the back end. To me, I thought it was more fair to CSA 13 to do it on the back end, but I could see an argument for, uh, I mean, up front, but I could see an argument for either way. Uh, otherwise, you run the risk of uh, potentially double dipping. You take it from them to put it into the reserve, and you take it from them again when you actually make the expenditure. Uh, but I'm open to things on there. And then the other thing I would say of note uh, on the revenue side, the paramedic incentive, um, I'm actually going to recommend increasing that by one additional paramedic because I believe that by next year uh, we will have three paramedics on staff. Whether we're actually able to implement paramedics is a totally different conversation. But right now this accounts for having two paramedics on staff. It's roughly about $11,000 per paramedic, I would add that there and it would also make an associated change on the uh, expenditure side, which I will get to. Uh, and then again, Measure A uh, will present in either May, most likely June. This will give a chance for the Park and Rec Commission to talk about it at their May meeting. We can look over what some of the planned future expenditures are, uh, as well as I think that it would be perfectly acceptable to submit a work plan to the county that says we're still earmarking funds to be used towards the maintenance uh, facility replacement project uh, with a plan to update our work plan. I don't think that they would personally have an objection to that as long as we had a clear plan on what we're doing. <coughs> uh, 
and then I would also say down the line moving forward the next large measure A expenditure is probably going to be focused on the pool and looking at a uh, replaster which won't be cheap um, I think that covers it of my notes on the revenue side I have a lot of notes on the expenditure side I can go through those or I can uh, field specific questions about revenue first I'm just curious on the um, on a couple of line items. The property tax unitary. Okay. Nothing's come in yet in budget, budget for income. Um, you know, here's the other thing I will tell you. It's not in the actual, and I was going to get the actual probably at the end right now. It's just kind of focused on the budget. Um, through the month of April, we've been starting to get some deposits. In fact, we've already exceeded our budget in total by about $11,000 in all categories combined for property taxes, and I expect more. Uh, in unitary, we have received just under $5,000 um, in the month of April. Uh, and looking at it in past years, this is when it starts to trickle in, and it's going to come in all the way up until June 30th, if not even in through July credited as a prior year. What is the unitary? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I, I can't uh, honestly look at every single one of these things and tell you exactly how they are calculated. That's why it is a bit of a guess on my part, though, mm -hmm. in terms of budgeting. Okay. <clears throat> and the uh, supplemental and secure. Supplemental, unsecured, um, I believe I have a $500 line. We've received $456 in April for that. So the, these two line items basically come in after? Yes. Yeah, they typically come in April the, 1st. This uh, in Q4. In. Okay. There's when they come in. Okay as well as more will be coming in. I mean, if you, as long as we're talking about taxes, I can tell you as of April 20th, we've gotten uh, 1.38 million in secured. Um, and we have received, we've been uh, 23,300 and change for collection fees. Unitary is at 4959. Um, unsecured is at 28,567. Uh, excess ERAP is at 161795 uh, And all of these will be updated when we redo the actual that was made the moves uh, for taxes. Um, that was in there. So uh, excess ERAP is actually at 5800 and change. Um, supplemental, we received 21500 uh, Supplemental unsecured, 456 Redemptions is 1,153. Um, nothing in the prior year, uh, we don't even use that anymore. And for prior year unsecured, 1,126. So for a total of 1.58 that has been deposited in our account after the contract. Okay. I'm always curious. Yeah, well, from a revenue perspective to this agency, uh, again, we have exceeded what we had budgeted, and I knew when I budgeted these that they were fairly conservative estimates last year. They recently, they released no projections as to tax revenues. It's way too All right. I'm done. Anybody yeah. else? From the public? Yeah. Um, uh, first, uh, I'm looking at the agenda. You didn't have open time at the beginning of the meeting, and I believe that's required under the Brown Act. Open time for public comment uh, on non agenda items is not required for a special meeting under the Brown Act. Okay, so there, you don't want any general commentary. You, you guys do understand what being a public agency is and having public meetings. Right, it's to actually engage the public, and even though there's a couple of us here, you're also being recorded, and uh, you do need to be responsive to the public. But uh, I, I had some questions concerning your presentation. So uh, the property tax is 
I, I just want to understand this. This is only for half the year, right? What's that? The revenues. Are uh, you saying the full full revenue for 16, 17 was 2.6 million? For 16, 17, what are you adding? I'm looking at the budget. I'm looking at the, you know, the, the budget and the actuals, budget and actuals. I just, I, I want to get a, a handle on what your presentation is saying here. Okay. You're, you're saying current secured, so that means there's unsecured, that means there's like, for example, for 17, 18, uh, the current secured 700,000, that means what? That's only what you have in, in pocket, right? It means and that's what was received as of March 31st. Okay, but there's another six month period, correct? It's, it's, yeah. it's well, it would be a three month, month period. period. This is, a, this is a fiscal year, so it would be a three month period, and it would be the amount that I just told you came in through April of 1.38. The actuals on here are only through 331. These came in uh, as of April 20th. Oh, okay. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm a little thick here. I'm trying to figure out what the, an, the annual uh, tax revenue uh, is to the district. Right now, we estimate. Right now, not estimated what's actually coming in. No, I don't, want, I don't want what you have in the pocket. I want to know what the full picture is. Okay, well, is that, is that a fair question? Well, I'm not sure I understand what question you're asking me. Revenue for the year, the tax year, what would be the projected um, and secured for which year right. now? Forced, well, I guess it would be. 17-18, let's see, 17, 18 starts in July, so let's let's just talk about 16-17. We haven't received everything yet. Okay, do you want to answer the question? Does anyone want to answer the question? We I thought it was very clear what I asked. Okay. It appears to say $1,372,967 is the estimated budget. current secured for the for this fiscal year. Okay, could so how much are we going to bring in in a year's time? How's that? That's it's a real simple question. In this fiscal year or in next fiscal year? Next fiscal year and next fiscal year. Let's, let's take a guess. Okay. Next. Well, next fiscal year, it's laid out right here in the budget. 17, well, 18, could you just so. repeat it so I can understand it? Well, can you read? Roundabout. No, just roundabout. So the current budget that we're in Round about, it's 5.5 million. 5.5 million. I thought it was. Uh, yeah, I thought that's it was. what the budget was. Okay, that's what I thought it was. Thank you, Eric. I th thought it was a very straightforward question, but that uh, the the budget that we're proposing, the 17-18 that starts July 1st. We're going to 5.7. That's what we're projecting. Okay. It, the way that it, it appears to, uh, you know, someone who's not a financial guy, is that there's a lot less uh, revenue coming in than actually is coming in. Okay. And so what the way that you've totaled figures, the middle. The middle column that you're looking at on the front page is the actual money that has arrived in our doors. As of as, March 31st. As of March 31st. I understand that. Okay. Okay. But I assume we're going to live throughout the year and we're going to get revenue throughout the year. I'm assuming that it's coming in currently. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anything else? Well, I'd like to make a, a comment on the fire department budget. Or you're going to do the department budget. We haven't done the expenditures yet. Right now, I've just gone over the anticipated revenues. I'm going to get expenditures next, so I might answer your question first. Well, as I mentioned uh, at your last meeting, uh, CSA 13 has a serious question about uh, the $40,000 projected legal costs uh, for the fire department. And 
I have a meeting next week up at the Civic Center to see uh, if they have uh, any advice on the appropriateness of that because basically the district's legal expense due to the perhaps intransigence of the union and or the district or both uh, is the reason for this what appears to be a very high figure which has nothing to do with providing us with fire protection and really should have nothing to do with our contract. So I would like uh, a provision or a footnote or something next to that $40,000 that uh, CSA 13 <coughs> share of that, which would be $10,000, 25%. Uh, we intend to uh, protest that on the basis that uh, it has nothing to do with uh, our contract. Assistant again, total burden cost for 1718. Uh, operating would be a little under seven thousand dollars for that. Um, the OPEB, <coughs> and it also is incorporated into any ancillary line there to PERS, um, workers' comp, so on and so forth. It's all represented in this budget. Um, OPEB trust. Uh, 60000 was recommended by the board. Uh, ultimately, it was $5,000 per month. Um, I allocated that across each department uh, in accordance with current retiree health care costs by department. So I went through looked at what we're paying for current retiree health care, what departments they're allocated to, came up with percentages, and then times those percentages by the 60000 to go towards each department. Um, Workers' comp, large increase is due to the rise in our experience modification factor from 166% to 233%. Uh, consultant fees, I've talked about this before. Uh, this consists of GASB 68 reports as well as some accounting consulting for reconciles as recommended by our auditor. Uh, Memberships in dues is uh, primarily our CSDA, California Special District Alliance membership, uh, as well as some department specifics. Uh, Long-term debt, the large decrease is due to the fact that we have all but paid off the building loan that was taken out when the community center was remodeled. There is one more payment to go that will happen in 1718. However, that payment will come out of a mandated reserve fund that was established when the loan was taken out um, that they actually control directly. So any excess revenue from that when this is done due to interest collection will actually come back to the district. Um, and then capital reserves, $100,000 was recommended by the board um, when we were going through and analyzing capital reserve needs. We looked at them by department. Uh, current capital reserve needs, and this would be something that would change on a year-over-year -year basis, uh, puts roughly $80,000 of that towards the fire department and $20,000 towards the park department. And that's how it was allocated for now. That can be changed. Uh, rec will certainly come in in future years. However, current needs that we have identified, we also have uh, identified as potential, if not likely, candidates for Measure A funding, at which point, once those are replaced, they would start being depreciated from a capital needs perspective, and those allocations would go towards uh, any future capital reserve designation. So for this year, that's why the rec department doesn't have anything allocated for capital reserves in their department. Um, it simply went by an internal spreadsheet that we all kind of put together. 
that I looked at, the cost to and said this is how much you would put on a yearly basis over our capital depreciation policy terms. Um, for the park, um, water and sewer, and even though we've had increased rates, uh, they are offset by several unused meters that have been shut off uh, that they started <coughs> applying very large monthly fees towards. We don't use these. These are irrigation lines primarily up in Lucas Valley Estates for the old berms that were put in and originally done when those plantings were first done to get them started. We haven't turned or ran water through there in several years, so paying fees on it seemed ridiculous. We contacted the water department and said, great, shut off the meters, um, and they did. So there goes several hundred dollars of fees every other month. Um, However, this may need to be increased pending proposed rate changes that are happening both at the water department and at the sewer department, according to the notice I just got in the mail there. So keeping an eye on those, uh, depending on how much they increase these by. These were carefully set looking at current rates and current fees. If they increase, well, I would recommend we increase that line by that amount at that time. Uh, but right now we don't know exactly what it is. And then for the park expenditure for equipment maintenance and replacement, that is almost entirely consisting of playground equipment at all three different ones, not replacing an entire playground that's much, much more expensive, but as individual pieces break, uh, they're not incredibly affordable to replace because they're usually proprietary and hard to find. Um, on the rec side, as far as expenditures go, salaries, part-time, uh, sees a large increase. However, that's also a direct correlation to our increase in revenue from program participation projections. Uh, if uh, program participation isn't there, neither will be the amount of staffing, but uh, the more programs and the more kids we serve, the more staff you need to do, and that's why that line goes up. Um, PERS has a, from a percentage standpoint, a seemingly large increase. Um, they did bear the brunt of uh, a lot of the UAL increase for classic miscellaneous employees. Um, I used the methodology for that in looking at all total payroll costs for that category and taking those percentages, applying them to PARC, taking those percentages and applying them to REC. So REC was at about 56% of total payroll cost for that part was at 44. As a result, they took on 56% of the unfunded accrued liability expense, which had a $20,000 year over year increase for classic miscellaneous employees. Uh, marketing includes all costs associated with the reviews, plus other marketing efforts such as banners and printings. Uh, and also the share of the website. Um, and when I say all costs, it includes mailing as well as printing. Um, water and sewer is going to be the same thing that I mentioned for part, you know, pending rate changes that are happening. So that could very well be a line needing to be looked at because the rate changes that are being proposed are pretty steep on both sides. Fire. Um, salaries right now are completely pending negotiations. This has not been factored in whatsoever. Depending on the outcome of negotiations, uh, the salaries will need to be, uh, the salary budget will need to be adjusted at that time, um, potentially. Uh, also, uh, I do need to adjust salaries prior to adoption. We recently learned, and I can say this out loud because I got confirmation that uh, it has at least been accepted by CalPERS of uh, an anticipated retirement of one of our firefighters, um, actually one of our captains. So that will be most likely on the agenda at the next meeting. Um, however, that's going to change the makeup of the staffing to some degree, at which point I'll incorporate a bottom step paramedic that will take the place of a uh, top step captain. Um, and then also at some point, I know the chief needs to make a move and put somebody into an engineer position. Um, so that will be factored into, and I'll try to get that a little bit closer. But since we have this knowledge and we know that up front, I will make those adjustments. So that will change slightly, and I actually expect total salaries for the year at least to go down a little bit, but that person will be back into a step system too. So um, FLSA could very well 
change, uh, kind of depending on any decisions about regular rate calculations that come out. Um, and this does not account for uh, potential of uh, the lawsuit outcome. Um, so that is not accounted for in here. Um, over time, uh, looking at actuals, I know it's very much different. Uh, this is kind of a historical figure that we've used for the last few years. However, I also think that once the chief can get back to full staffing, I think the retirement of uh, one of his firefighters as well as his other long-term injury coming back should actually help to greatly reduce his overtime burden. Uh, legal is based on current as well as anticipated. Uh, we'll obviously monitor this throughout the year. It could change dramatically up or down depending on how quickly uh, this uh, lawsuit is able to progress and either be uh, settled or decided upon by an administrative law judge. Um, then the other big thing that is not accounted for in here, either in 1617 or 1718, is the kitchen project. Uh, I purposely haven't put it in 1718 because I honestly thought that this would be completed during 1617 and would require an amendment. I think the more we go through this, uh, I still hope that's a realistic goal. I, I, I think it's a realistic goal. I don't know <coughs> if it's a realistic goal, so it'll be... Uh, uh, that is something obviously worth keeping an eye on as well. And I think that goes down the line for <coughs> budgeted expenditures. The legal fees for the fire department, um, you mentioned the lawsuit, but there's also the negotiations Correct. as well. What percentage has to do with the lawsuit? I mean, do you have any feel for that? Not at this point in time, I don't. I, uh, again, with more uh, an actual scenario, I think it, you know, really kind of depends on what ha it happens with negotiations. I don't, I'm, I cannot get into the details of what was proposed on either side. Obviously, uh, uh, they've gone on for a long time under this current negotiation. I think once it's settled, uh, you're going to launch right into the next round of negotiations for the next MOU because the current one is so far expired. I just want to mention, um, in light of some of what Derek said earlier about uh, revenues, and revenues uh, oftentimes we're um, declaring a budget and looking at the budget and approving the budget before we really have a, a complete picture of what we're going to actually get. That is also true on some of the expenditure items. Um, although this will not affect the 1718 budget in August of this year, we anticipate receiving the CalPERS actuarial valuation of pensions. Um, just as a reminder, during that entire during the entire year of 2016, CalPERS continued to anticipate a 7.5 percent return on investment and realized less than one percent. So while it won't hit this coming year's fiscal budget it's going to definitely hit us in 1890. So um, if we look at the bottom line and say, wow, we're flush, we're ready to go, we need those funds for the future. <clears throat> Jeff, I would also add on to that, saying that uh, this is the last fiscal year that CalPERS is going to be utilizing a 7.5% investment return rate as well. Um, your discount rate's going to go down, that's going to drive up. Your 18, 19 pension costs are, are going to go up dramatically, yep. even if you have zero changes. We covered 22. We covered yeah, that 2021. Yeah. It's over a three year period. Yeah. It's just a discount rate change. Uh, and it kind of resets the clock on their plans on UAL to where you're going to have that five year ramp up period with the 10 year even out, and then a five year ramp down period as well. So, yep. Exactly. Yeah, no, I, I, you make a good point. Um, this is a snapshot of one year. Mm -hmm. This is not a long term forecast. This is a PL budget for 1718. Mm -hmm. 
One of the comments you made earlier about an increase in general insurance, I'm not quite sure I understand. When I look at the general insurance line, I, I'm looking at 5210, 525. Um, I'm not sure, at least what I was looking at, it didn't appear to be spiking all that much. Is, am I reading the wrong line? Uh, was it, is that a comment that I made today or? No, 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 in, I think in he was, he was, notes. He was talking about workers' comp insurance, which is 514 five. That would be more, that would be what I would expect as well. Yeah. Okay. So it's not general insurance, it's workers' comp insurance. Yes. And that's something you talked about earlier in the meeting. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, but read me your account line again, please. 521025. The reason I called it out is um, it says a sharp increase in general insurance. And I think insurance general is 5210 and 525, is it not? Oh, you are correct. I'm sorry. It's a, uh, I know I know what you're talking about. No, it, on the fire side, there is a, uh, you are right. Uh, and that was in this statement online. It's actually benefits in group medical. Benefits of group medical. Yes, okay. because what I have in, because of the retirement. retirement. Yeah. Okay. You're essentially adding another person to. Uh, Understood. Yeah. It was one healthcare. of those two things. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. You're right. <laughs> okay. no, no, it's uh, benefits for uh, group medical, okay. not general insurance. Okay. I know it. Yeah. yeah. kitchen because it hopes to be done with it before next year. Uh, is a, is he's a little, a, he's a little more optimistic than the chief right now, but I'm working on it. <laughs> oh, optimism wanes with each day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but we have uh, three areas of storm damage that isn't showing up in the budget at all. And it, it'd be great if we get reimbursed, but FEMA seems to be, when they do reimburse, it's a couple of years after the fact a lot of times. Uh, there's always, whenever we're declared a disaster area, by the way, there's always two disasters. There's never just one. The first disaster is the storm. The second disaster is FEMA. Oh, yeah. and I, I have that from many years of past experience dealing with it. In any event, it seems to me that some money ought to be budgeted for at least the consultants to get on with the design work of the two creek bank issues. Uh, the, by the pool building and by the field and the Ponte Fire Road. So that when, I don't know if you've gotten yet your proposals back from Miller Pacific or anyone else, but uh, I, I have no idea the magnitude of them, but uh, most likely at the rate things are going, you wouldn't have to pay them until next fiscal year anyway. But it seems like there ought to be something set aside for that. Maybe even something for some of the actual work. I don't know, because you're going to be advancing it if FEMA's going to pay for it. If they aren't going to pay for it, you're going to, we're going to be paying for it. So that, that's one area. So would that be capital reserves that I could think put the so. money into? Yeah, I mean. Um, I don't think it would be capital reserves. Um, to Irv's point, I think work needs to be done during the fiscal year. Uh, I have a meeting on Thursday with representatives from FEMA as well as Cal State OES. Uh, Chief and Shane are going to be joining me. It's what they refer to as their kickoff meeting. I'm actually expecting a lot more information to come through from that, uh, as well as an understanding of development of a project list. And the three projects that you just mentioned would be the primary ones. I have not received any level of uh, quotes or estimates back from Miller Pacific or any engineering firms that we've had come out to, right now I'm expecting something to come from Miller Pacific simply to do some soil density testing behind here and I haven't gotten any sort of estimate for that work from them yet. I know that they're incredibly uh, backlogged as is kind of everybody uh, dealing with some of these storm things that's where we're at waiting on them right now. Um, I have the initial numbers that I had given to FEMA.
Fukushima as a placeholder. Um, I don't know how close to accurate those are at this point, or but until we can really start bringing people out. When I went to the briefing orientation in Sonoma County a couple months ago, the one thing FEMA was very clear on is don't do anything until we have this meeting and you have a assigned claim number and everything else from that point forward, you can, you can move. Um, I brought the people out primarily because I want to know what my immediate sense of urgency was uh, in terms of further damage to the creek bank areas due to erosion and things. And both of the people that I brought out, a hydrologist as well as a geotech, said I don't foresee an urgent need of this, but yes, it has to be addressed, but you're not going to show up tomorrow and have uh, uh, this creek side running up to your pool building. So from there, it's no longer kind of a quote unquote OES defined emergency. Um, again, Thursday, day after tomorrow, we have that meeting, and I think I'm going to have a lot more to go. I don't disagree with you. In fact, I think you make a very good point in terms of uh, adding it onto a uh, expenditure line. It could even uh, from a revenue line. I mean, I know what percentage is. I would anticipate receiving back from them. It can be put into reimbursed expenses, or it can be put into OES reimbursements. Um, Oh yes, kind of makes sense in this point. We never budget for OES reimbursements as a revenue line. It's always only been reimbursements that primarily have come in from wildland strike team assignments, which we never budget for. Um, so any budgeted line in there would automatically be obviously this, not to mention it would fall under parks. So that would be a, a different scenario anyway. I, I understand, yeah, I, I, I'm not, carrying where you physically put it. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, if you're going to get anything done this year before next winter, uh, you're going to need to have the, the areas mapped, because you're going to have to prepare plans and specifications. You're going to have to have the investigations, probably by Cayman Hydrology and Miller Pacific. And then you're going to have to have someone design the repairs. So there, and then you'll have plans and specs you can go out to into a contract. And I don't know if even that can get done and be, before you can't work in the creek any longer. Because the actual work will probably have to occur in either September or October when the creek is as dry as possible. Mm, right. And there's going to be permitting potentially. You'll find out, out about that on, uh, at your meeting. Because the Corps of Engineers, Water Quality, and Fish and Game will be interested, maybe, if there isn't an exemption somehow. Yeah, well, I would assume that they will be interested, but I also, when I went to the briefing, I met with their, uh, for lack of a better term, environmental liaison, both from FEMA and from Cal OES, and they've navigated those waters, uh, so to speak, for many projects, uh, so they definitely will be a good resource. Again, the only reason we haven't moved forward on this is they were very loud and clear in terms of don't do anything until we tell you to start. Otherwise, it could jeopardize your ability to be reimbursed for these expenses. I hear and understand that because yeah. something wasn't actually falling into the creek. Right. Uh, but uh, I, I, as I told Eric already, I will not be here for the was it May 9th meeting when you moved off the budget. Yeah. And so I was I wanted to just make sure that you know Eric will have more information for you by then. But I don't. I think there ought to be some money set aside for at least the job of getting the plans and specifications put together to go out to bid. Uh, they're going to be good sized projects. The, the other item that I was wondering about is we have confidential negotiations with the union, so we can't talk about what anything really is, but it seems to me that it might be logical to put some kind of a placeholder amount of money in the budget because we're pretty sure the negotiations will not end up in a reduction in costs. Uh, and, and it seems to, you know, it, I don't know, it, unless it, it takes away from our ability to ne negotiate, uh, I just it so that, that was done in previous years, or not to interrupt. And at some point, the board took the position that it kind of tipped their hand, and they removed it. So, 
but yeah, it was put in as a contingency for salaries in previous budgets. This goes back 15 years, but. Just something I was wondering about. Like I said, I'm not going to be here at the next meeting. I don't know if you, if you, if you want to bring the subject up, but just a thought. But the other thing I would say is once those negotiations are closed uh, and there is a deal, that deal would be announced in a public setting and you know, amend the budget at that point in time as well. Those are my comments. Thanks, sir. Any comments from the public? Steve? Thank you. Um, uh, I, I, you know, this project, I don't know anything about this project, uh, but I know, is it an erosion or is there, you have to rebuild the, the whole bank? A little bit of uh, both. Okay. Because there are, are some, if it, erosion is a concern, I've been working with Rachel Kamen up at Dixie School District. She, got some natural means of, of uh, controlling erosion further upstream uh, be something within the capabilities of our staff. Um, Rachel's been out. She has, okay. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, so this is a, another simple question because, you know, I'm told you I, I, uh, I'm just a simple man trying to understand uh, what you've got here. Now, I'm looking at this, and you say this, uh, these figures are actually uh, for three months. So if you kind of want to, is that right? You're comparing three-month periods with three-month periods? No. Oh, no. No, the actuals is through 330. Oh, okay, so that's that nine, months. nine months. Nine months, okay. Okay, and so, but the, the you're comparing it to 17, 18, so this is where you would expect to be nine months into 17, 18, is that correct? No, no. So, no, 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 the, no. so the first column is the old budget for the full fiscal year. Okay. The second column is the actuals for nine months of this current year. Okay. And then the, last, the third column is the budget for the full next year. All right, so thanks for uh, clarification there. And also, when you talk about regular employees, are you including the uh, uh, safety staff or the, the fire department there? Are they considered regular staff or they, is that another category? No, they're regular staff. Okay. All right, so that's two questions I have. Thank you. The conclusion of, I guess, of our beginning by the motion. I move to adjourn. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.